Our next guest says, even though the greatest period of wealth creation may have passed for this group, the so-called FANG stocks still present a great buying opportunity. Here with his Squawk Picks is Howard Ward, Gamco's Chief Investment Officer of Growth Equities. Howard, um, great to have you with us. Thank you. Why, why do you think that the best times are behind this group of stocks? Well, all you have to do is look at the market cap uh, that these stocks have generated. You know, 500 to nearly a trillion dollars of market cap. That's an enormous amount of wealth, really unprecedented in, in history. And the, the amazing thing, which is what I'm arguing, is that even though these stocks have been so good for so long, these are like, it's like a great 1970s rock band that, much to everyone's amazement, is still performing well 30 or 40 years later. These have a long runway ahead of them mm -hmm. because these companies developed these markets, they had first mover advantage, and they now dominate them, and it's going to be very difficult to dislodge them. Some will always say that it's only a matter of time before the competition comes, and in particular for Netflix, we've seen the stock under pressure since Disney announced its own streaming service. Netflix reports after the bell today, Deutsche Bank upgraded the stock, BMO raised the price target today, so yeah. some positive sentiment going into the numbers. But are, are there concerns that perhaps they develop the market, they've got the consumer hooked on streaming, we're used to paying fairly low prices for a lot of content, and now we're going to bring that business someplace else. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about that. I mean, I think they represent about 10% of television viewing today. The future growth in video is streaming. The Disney decision validates that. And I don't think people are going to be canceling their Netflix, Netflix subscription in order just to buy Disney. Now, Disney's a great company, and I'm sure they'll have a fine product. They're years behind. When you look at the content spin, Netflix is going to spend 13 or 14 billion dollars this year. Right. Disney's going to spend 4 billion in a few years. So by the time Disney Because Disney has a lot of content already. Right. It's got its whole catalog of old movies I understand and Star that. Wars and all that stuff. I understand that. But my point is that new content, new original content that race is going to be Netflix to own. Are we looking, when you say Netflix has the advantage, are we looking too narrowly? I mean, in the international markets where it's the growth market for Netflix, there are newer markets, and Disney's also going to go there internationally. Should we be really looking at that and saying, you know what? Disney could have a decent shot at getting some, some share there. Sure they will, but again, the market is so big. Uh -huh. You know, we're talking about a scale here. Netflix has about 140 million subs. They're probably going to add 10 million when they report today. Uh, so they're going to be at 150 million subs. And, and Disney's hoping to be 60 to 90 in how many years? And by then, Netflix is going to be at 300 million plus. And so, you know, it's a big market. The pricing umbrella that has been created by traditional cable bundled video is enormous. There's a long runway here, and this is where the growth is. We've talked a lot about this over the past couple of weeks. How much do you think the average American household is going to be ultimately paying for the bundle or TV content exclusive of the broadband piece of it? Well, that's on a monthly basis. Because if know, you can figure that answer out, sure. then, you can, then you can back into all of uh, you, and try to understand yeah. how many of these services really have an opportunity to succeed. <laughs> I don't know what the average is, but 50 to to $100 for your video subscription is probably doable for many households. But the key thing here is at the margin, you know, where is the growth going to be? And at the margin, the growth is in streaming. It's, it's in, in cord cutting or never adopting the cord and going straight into streaming. And so, uh, you know, this is the beauty of the, of the Netflix model. And the bigger Netflix becomes, the more they can spend on content, their, their revenue per user is rising, their content spend per user is declining, the margins are growing, the earnings are about to explode, and so they've really grow they're growing and will continue to grow into their valuation very nicely over the next few years. So shares are up 1.5% pre-market again, getting an upgrade today and a price target raise. Let's talk about Facebook. It seems like the regulatory headwinds could be mounting around the world sure. for Facebook. So what's, what's the bull case here? Because from what, I mean, I don't understand how you can even put a number on how much they'll have to spend in order to come into compliance with regulations that don't exist yet. Right. So the amount of spending to, to address these issues is pretty much sapping any growth in earnings this year. But the top line is still growing at more than 20%. The fear after last year's privacy concerns is that the audience would leave, the users would decline. They haven't. They still have 2.5 billion monthly average users. 
The fear was that the advertisers would say no mas. That hasn't happened. The advertisers not only stayed, they're increasing their advertising spend with Facebook because the targeted ads that they deliver provide a high return on an investment. And, and when you look at digital ads, you're really talking about Google, who's the king of digital ads, Facebook, who's number two, and Amazon, who's now a growing three. Mm -hmm. This is the market. This is, what, you know, this is where the ad dollars are going. Just like the video dollars are going to streaming, the ad dollars are going digital. Amazon, make the case for it here. Amazon. Amazon has 6% of retail sales because they have about half of the online retail, which is about 12% of total. Amazon uh, is going to continue to dominate e-commerce. AWS, their web services business, they're the biggest factor by two, more than twice the size of competitor Microsoft, who's also doing a good job. The margins for Amazon Web Services should be growing by several hundred basis points over the next few years, a source of incremental profit growth. So they dominate a very fast growing business there in the cloud, they can, and they also dominate the best part of retail. Mm -hmm. And also, like Netflix, as margins expand, the earnings explode over the next few years, and they grow into a valuation which is now down to the, into the low 30s right. on next year's earnings.